Good afternoon, everybody. So for this lesson, we will be explaining and focusing on the principles of human development. Now, in the first activity that you did, you answered two questions, specifically whether or not growth and development is of the same thing. The second question is if a person will still develop even if he or she is already in the old age. Now, in this lecture that I will give to you, you will be discovering or finding out whether your answer matches with what reality is. So let's go ahead and go to our lesson for this morning. Let's start with the identification of our less objectives. So at the end of the lesson, these are the three things that you need to accomplish. First is that you will be able to differentiate development and growth. Second, is that you will be able to define human development in your own words. And third, is you will distinguish between the traditional and the lifespan approach of development. So, let's go ahead and move forward to the first part. Now, along the way, as I go ahead and explain each concept, we use Baby Sicilian as our example in our these specific concepts. So let's start with the first agenda, the growth and development. Well, try to recall what your answers are on our first activity. Is growth and development the same? Are they different or are they related? The answer is yes, they are related, but they are not the same because growth actually refers to the increase in size and number. And on the other way around, development refers to an improvement in circumstances so take for example the first example that we use the baby sicilian okay when we talk about growth baby sicilian will grow in terms of his height in terms of his weight the length of his hair the length of his nails his body proportions those are the examples of what growth is well, on the other way around, when we say baby Sicilian develops, it means, it could mean that he matures, the maturity, okay? So, that maturity refers to development, okay? So, as we look into it, if we focus on these different examples on both growth and development, growth actually refers to quantitative well, on the other way around, development is qualitative, okay? So they are related because a human would always undergo growth and developmental processes. However, they are not the same. Again, let me just reiterate, growth is quantitative, anything that can be measured by numbers. Well, on the other way around, development is qualitative it's giving description okay so that's it for growth and development so moving forward on the next question that i asked to you whether a person still develops even he or she is already in the old age so let's take a look at which viewpoint that you actually are are you in the traditional viewpoint or in the lifespan approach. So, there are a lot of, or there are two approaches how people view human development. The first one is traditional approach, and the second one is lifespan approach. So, let's start with the traditional approach here. In the traditional approach, they view that a human would only develop up until in the adulthood once the person reaches adulthood he will decline and will no longer develop that's the viewpoint so meaning kung tiguang na ka mawala na sad kay gamit kasi dili naman ka mo develop that is actually the viewpoint of a traditional approach so can i say baby sicilian bata ka man to siya traditional approach now once more reach as old age when you come develops you're not capable of doing any development 
However, na yung mga niingnon nga, no, it's not correct nga once you reach reach old age, you will no longer develop. And they proposed another way, another way of approach, and that is the lifespan approach. They tell that a person, no matter what their age are, as long as they are still alive, then they are capable of development. So they are the supporters of habang may buhay, habang may uh, how I nabubuhay sa mundo, then there is development. Okay? So that's the lifespan approach. So sa so baby cillion, even if basta pa siya, ni tigulang up until whatever age she is, as long as she's alive, it's capable of development. And another way to differentiate the, these two viewpoints is that the starting point of how when a person develops. In the traditional approach, that development only takes place once you are born. So, in the anak ra nimo, anak ra ka mo develop. But the si lifespan approach na development actually takes place the moment that you are actually for the, there there is actually conception. Okay? When the egg cell and the sperm cell actually unites. There is fertilization. Ingon si lifespan approach nga. No, 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 no. Dili na sakto ang inagkaanak pa ka ma-develop. Okay? The moment that you were conceived, there is already development. Okay? So that's the way how you look into these two approaches. So, you now determine what is the correct answer. What would be the answer? Are you, are you on the traditional approach? Or are you in the lifespan approach? Try to look at it. Anyway, let's move forward to the next part of our lesson when we look into the characteristics of human development from a lifespan perspective. So there are five characteristics, five viewpoints of a lifespan approach. If we look here in the first viewpoint, and that is development is lifelong. As I have mentioned a while ago, that in the lifespan approach, development, as long as you are alive, there is development. It doesn't end in adulthood. So if you look into baby Sicilian, from very young age, from the conception up until the old age, then he can still develop because he has still life, he is still alive. Second one is that development is plastic. What does it mean? Um, maybe you have some negative connotation when we say plastic because of whatever stereotypes that we have in our culture. But plasticity or being plastic means there is potential for change. That's the reason why those products, those things, materials that are made of plastics are called as such because they can be molded into different shapes, into different structure. And that's what it means when we say potential for change. And that is the same with what we say when we say development is plastic. Because even if you started with a bad timing, you are not doing good at the early age. However, there is still potential for change. If you look into it, try to look at baby Cecilia. When he is, let's say for example, when he was still in the elementary grades, he actually is doing very not so good on the subject mathematics. There could be any other reason that affected how he performs. However, when he go to high school, there is a change because he actually excelled in mathematics. So see. It's possible that if, whether, if you're not good at ele in elementary of, with mathematics and in high school, there's a potential that you could change, that you could be doing good, that you could be doing an excellent job on that subject. So that's what we say development is plastic. Nothing is actually final. Whether who you are right now, if you're not doing good in your, or what you are doing, it doesn't necessarily mean that 
all throughout your life, you will not be doing good. Because if you're a lifespan, if you're following the lifespan approach, we all have the potential to develop. Next, the third one is development is multidimensional. So this means that it's not just our body, the physical structure would change, would develop. It also includes our cognitive, the way we think, we develop sa na. It will mature and also mo mature sa na atong social emotional way of living. Their social emotional processes. So if you can observe, when we were still young, we make friends with our with the with children at our age, and as we grow old, as age progresses, different relationship are actually explored. So it's no longer friendship. It could be an intimate or romantic relationship. So development is multidimensional. It's not just your mind, it's not just your body, but the way how your social emotional processes will also develop, will also change. Okay? So that is the third. In relation to the third print viewpoint of the lifespan approach is that development takes place gradually. So the way who you are right now, you being a college student, is not a product of an overnight process. You were here in college, you are here in college because you took the necessary steps for you to be here. And it didn't take place just for one night, one month, or one year. It is in a gradual process. So, if baby Cecilion is now still a baby, he can be who he wants, but he has to take the necessary steps for him to develop. Okay? Takes place gradually. So if you want to be some somebody else, someone that you would want to, do not expect that you could achieve it overnight. You have to be gradual. You will develop gradually. We do not rush things. It will come on perfect time and at the right moment. Next, related still, is the development is relatively orderly. What does it mean? Of course, when we develop, it doesn't, if there's no instance, you develop your head, so it, it's not disorderly. It's actually relatively orderly. When we say relatively orderly, we think of these two patterns. First is the cephalocodal and the second is the proximodistal pattern. So let's start with the cephalocodal. In the cephalocodal pattern that we develop first our head from the top to the bottom. Okay, so we develop our head first before our feet. And man, if you look into the pictures when you were still young, look into the internet. Yeah, when we were still in the womb of our mother, the proportion of our head compared to the other parts of the body mas dako ang ulo. Then as time goes by, o pareho na siya o proportionate na siya with the other parts of the body. So that's cephalocodal. Proximodistal is the development takes place from the inside going to the outer extremities of the body. So what does it mean? Maunaw develop at ang torso, including ato chest, before ang ato ang arms. If you could look into babies, for example, baby Cecilion, magunaw gina siya o dahik kanang Una niya ay yung dughan na more siya somewhat like more snake na mukamang but not really kamang using the hands. Okay? Una na siya. Afterwards, mukamang na siya with the use of kanita ang mga big arms then going to the outer extremities. So that's the proximo distal. That's the reason nga mas mabukat sa mga bata o una ang mga big arms Huwag mga dago nga butang, like mga big things, ilang mga big magunitan, paano na nilang develop compared sa magsulat sila sa og pen, pencils. Di ba? Because the, we need these fine motor skills 
para makasulat na, ma-develop. Kay katong mga dagok ng butang, gross motor skills man. So that's the proximal distal. Again, cephalocodo, from the top to the bottom. The proximal distal on the other hand, from the center to the outer extremities of our body. Moving forward, development is contextual. Number four, it means that individuals respond to and act on context. So say, for example, baby Sicilian has a twin brother. It just so happens that his twin brother was raised on other countries. Okay? So they may have the same genes, but it doesn't mean that the way they develop would actually be the same. Okay? Because we respond to our culture, to our environment. So the way how we are, we are raised, when Sicilian na raised in the Philippines, I had twin brother in, say for example, the USA. So they will have a different development because they respond to a different context. Okay? So moving forward here is the fifth viewpoint, the characteristics of a lifespan approach, that development involves growth, maintenance, and regulation. So what does it mean? So it doesn't mean as magbuyot ka, then you will develop, then you will grow. Of course, you have to work on this development that you want to, because if you would not strive to work on it, then it will fade, it will go away. So we have to make it sure that there is growth, maintenance, and regulation in order for us to maintain development. Okay, so we can look into this. That into this example, look into the picture. Take note that the goals of an individuals vary among developmental stages. Look into it. When, when you were still young, as you can remember, you have all the time, you have the energy, but you don't have the money. When you are now adult, you have all the money, you have all the energy, but you don't have time. At the old age. You have all the time, you have all the money, however, you don't have the energy. So that just means that in every stage of your life, na kay goal, nga imuhang i achieve, depending among your developmental stage. Of course, kung bata ka, ang sa imuhang goal of development, you want to finish your studies. When you are already adult, you're already working, you have a business, what's your goal? To grow that business? To grow your professional um, life, your professional career, and in your old age, you have also a different goal. That's the reason why it involves growth, maintenance, and regulation. So that's all for our lesson in this for this week. So I hope you learned something about the human development. I hope you have you will be able now to uh, differentiate growth and development you'll be able to um, say or state human development in your own words, and you will also be able to differentiate lifespan from the traditional approach of development. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening, and have a great day.